Hi, this is Mark Carrington from mybitcoinprofits.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I find stocks to invest in. I will go through some criteria. I will go through the screening tool that I will use, and I will show you some examples. Let's do criteria first. I'm going to talk about picking stocks that I want to buy. So stocks that I'm looking to go up. Two sets of criteria. There are fundamental criteria that describe the business and then there are technical criteria that describe the charts. The fundamental criteria that I consider is, is that I look, I'm looking for companies of a particular size. So market capitalization is the metric I use for size and I'm looking for companies that are larger than medium. So I'm looking for large-ish companies rather than small companies. And then I use one of three metrics. You use these independently of each other because you do come up with slightly different lists. The first is price to book valuation. Um, the price is the market, the share price times the total number of shares, so market capitalization, compared to the book value of the assets the company is holding. Quite often, and it applies especially in financial institutions, is the market thinks the value of the book assets is overstated, so we get a valuation of less than one. And the market's not always right because what the assets are doing is they're generating earnings, and it's really earnings power that we're interested in. The second criteria that I use quite often and it applies particularly for businesses that are not asset rich so service type businesses or technology businesses where the ratio of the price to the total revenues of the business is a way of measuring with one number potential and the cutoff that I use is one and a half and remember in my own experience we sold our consulting business for a price to sales ratio of just over two. The third one has to do with earnings estimates. So looking at forward estimates of earnings compared to share price. And we're looking for a ratio that's less than the current market. So we could do less than 10 or less than 15. The current S&P 500 is about 18. So those are the fundamentals. Now we go to technicals. The technicals is all about how a thing looks on the chart, how a stock looks on the chart. So what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for stocks that are showing momentum. So I want to see price that has made a high. I use a one month high because that's what the screener allows, but it could be a, you could go as far out as say, I'm only interested in something that's made a six month high. So that takes out the noisy things that happened three months ago and we can ignore them. So, but I'm looking for one month high and then I use moving averages to, to test momentum for me. I use three moving averages. And what a moving average is, is just an average share price over the period of time that you're looking at. So for 20 days, so 20 working days, one month, you take the price every day, divide by 20. I use exponential moving averages, just puts more weight on recent price than on previous prices. So on the earlier prices have less weight than the previous prices. And I'm looking for moving averages to be in a particular shape. I want the 20 to be above the 50. And particularly what I want to see is the 20 has come up from underneath the 50 and has now overtaken it rather than something that's flip flopping from above and then up from below and then from above. So that gives me an idea of momentum. And then I want to see the 200 day moving average sitting above both of those. So that tells me that this is early momentum rather than something that's been running for quite a while. It's all very well in theory. How does that look on a chart? Here's a chart of Yan Cole, which I bought this week. I'll just highlight a few things here for you. The first is I'm working on a daily. Daily. One month high, you can see this price here is one month high and the, the stacking of the averages, the 50 is the bottom, the 20 is 
above that and it's risen through from below and they're both below the 200 over here and that's really what I'm looking for as it happens in this particular case from this time here we would have seen a one month high here here and here so the three times this stock will have appeared on the signal the reason I didn't buy it two weeks ago is I wasn't looking two weeks ago so there's the summary of the criteria that I like to use now let's just talk about the charting package that I use. I use tradingview.com. I use it very specifically because it has real-time forex prices at a very low price. I was paying $100 a month for forex prices and I'm now paying, paying appreciably less. In fact, what I'm paying is $20 a month. So $240 in a year is, and so with every two months, I've saved my whole subscription. The, there is a free plan. The free plan, the important parts of the free plan, it allows only one chart per layout. It allows three indicators per chart. And that is, that can become an important limitation, but given that we're using three moving averages, that works perfectly well. And I'm just going to roll down very quickly down here to see the other thing I'm interested in is there's a stock screener and the stock screener is available on the free plan. I use the Pro Plus plan because of the real time Forex prices and because I like to save multiple chart layouts. And the other thing I like is I can have two devices signed in at the same time rather than having to log out in and out of all of the time. So let's just step across to tradingview.com and have a look see what it looks like so here you'll see my yan cole chart that i showed earlier on this is a live chart with delayed data it says delayed data every 20 minute delay data what i'm looking for is i'm looking to go down to this button here called screener now this screener button then it just pops up into the bottom half of the window you'll see it's got an american flag here it's got three stocks listed I want to step across to the Australian screen because that's how I landed up at Yam Goal. Uh, let's talk about the, the, the process of building the screen. More information on layout. Price to book is a is the set of columns that are d listed here. This is one that I've custom my, customized myself. It has the closing price, it has the market cap. You can see the screen. It has price to book values and it also has price to sales value. It's got the market choice that we can go through here, a whole range of market choices. I will come back to that. And then there's the screens that I've created and there are some default screens. So I'm working on price to book. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what that screen will look like. So I've just popped on that little filter logo, the filter icon. And this is what it does is it summarizes the criteria that you are actually using. Market cap, greater than 2 billion is the cutoff I used. It works as a slider. New one month high, exponential moving averages above, exponential average 50 below the 200, <clears throat> price to book below one. How easy is it to set? I'll show you. I've reset them all. I've left it as Australia. And what we'll notice behind here is, is that I've, currently it says 1,650 something tickers that are available. If I move that across a bit, we'll see 61659. A nice productivity feature is, is that it leaves the things that you were working at at the top of the list so you so if you just keep coming back to the same things it's very productive for you but there is a search feature here so if I can go to market cap I can then do that but let's do that in a in a different way I'm going to go through it in this order I'm going to step across to descriptive across the top because remember we talked about descriptive fundamental and technical descriptive is market cap this is a slider I want to increase it. 2 billion is the cutoff that I used and you'll see that we're now down to 145 companies. We can make this any size we want. We can 
can just have little companies, we could have big companies, we can slide down to have companies in the middle. That's the only descriptive criteria I need. The fundamental criteria I needed was I wanted to do price to book or price to sales or price earnings. So if I type in price in the search, I can see price to book, price to earnings, price to book full year MRQ, I'm going to use MRQ, price to revenue, price to sales. So I'm going to use, I want a price to book, remember we wanted a price to book below one. And we now have only five matches. Now I've left price, the price stays in the search box. I wanted a one month high. So if I just typed in high, you'll see what the options are. One month, three month, six month, all time high. So I want a one month high and we'll see we're down to, to one. Now the question is, is where the moving averages all in the right place. I will just type in there the words average. And it gives me a list of the words with the words average. Exponential moving average 20. I needed the 20 to be above. The value I wanted was above the 50. And I wanted the 50 to be below 200. No change in the list at the, at the back here, but we now have all of my criteria. I'm going to get rid of that. Go to all and you'll see the summary of the four criteria that I've put down here. Close the X. You'll see price to book now at my screen that I was working has a star on it, which means it is not being saved. So if I want to save my screen as, I'll leave it at the same name. It is now saved. So here's my screen. We know the chart. We just click on the name and it pops the chart up. We click on the ticker symbol itself. It pops up a new window that gives me a description about the business. So you can see straight away from this chart what I'm interested in. Chart's been stocks been beaten up, gone sideways, and is now broken on, broken out. This is a very easy one. There's a description of what the company actually does. There's information about all the data, and there's some news related to the stock. The real excitement I have about this particular screener is I can just sit there and say I'm sitting in Australia. I want to go and do price to sales. Are there any stocks that meet those criteria? The answer is they're not. What other criteria? Market type, market cap, symbol type, new one month high. This one I've actually used simple moving averages. Or is the other one I used exponential moving averages? Probably doesn't make a difference, but one should be consistent. So I will change that in due course. And then the other one I have is I'm looking for price to earnings below 15. You'll remember our criteria was 10. You'll see that there are no stocks that emerged in here. Let's look at those. Market cap, same size, price to earnings below. And the moving averages are all exactly the same. Now, if we then, then go and, so I'm gonna go back to price to book to book. And I want to now look at another market. I've been spent a lot of time looking at Japan recently. So just one button, it's now pulled 15 stocks out of Japan. And then the way I work with this is, is that I want to look at the best or the worst. So there we have the one that's the worst. And I just look at the charts. Or I might want to look at the largest. So I've sorted it from smallest to largest. And here's a large one. Price to book one. Is it of interest to me from a chart point of view? So if I go to my normal discipline process is I want to look at the worst. 
and just go one by one through them so here on the daily the chart you can see stocks run up broken down bottomed out and broken out that's why it's popped up on the screen how does that look on a weekly chart on the weekly chart it's it it is it is it's this thing is very choppy very noisy very messy I'm actually not that interested in it if I go to the next one Daiwa motor transportation on a weekly chart it's gone sideways just broken out recently none of those look like this chart you see this is what I like to see something that's been broken down is broken down gone out broken out this one's actually done that thing twice here's another one this is the sort of shape that I want sure this one's broken out yet but that's the process that I go through so that for me is the real excitement is this ability to go and step across in a market so I'm sitting in Japan I'm now looking at price to sales I can sort them from the best to the worst or from the worst to the best and I can just look at the chart and if I find one that's interesting then I will go and explore a little bit more this one has got some potential shape you notice that I am looking here at a weekly chart I don't like the size of these bars so it's very volatile this one this Sasori company was on the um, was on the other was on the other screen And then if I go and just pull the price to earnings below 15, I've actually got 18. It's going to change that filter, change this value to 10. Let's see what pops up. I still have six. I want to go to the valuation screen to see price to earnings I want the worst how I back and there's a chart that's starting to look the way I like to see a chart run up broken down gone sideways for ages and now starting to show signs of life that was a weekly chart the daily chart is much more messy there's some very wide ranges in these in these prices on each day urban life company that's interesting shape urban life company is a real estate company Dacian chemical completely different industry no idea what Hirakawa Utech does it's certainly showing signs of life if I want to find out what Hirakawa Utech does I just press the button and then go and find out one year chart is interesting it's actually the one year chart so really it's had problems this last year but whatever was going on it does electrical components and equipment so whatever is going on some business problems happened in this year so there's my process just a quick summary picking stocks based on fundamentals choosing one of these three criteria on technicals I want to see signs of life and there is an example of something that is showing signs of life and then my analysis after that is basically is this business going to go out of business is it going to keep running and if I'm not really sure I just go and buy a very small parcel of shares and go from there so I hope that helps with your investing processes I wish you good luck